G'day all. So, we're going to look at this question here. We're going to be finding the inverse function again, and we're going to be stating the domain and range of this inverse function. So, firstly, one thing that should come to mind when we are looking at inverse functions. If we have a function and how it relates to sorry, I'll just so our function f we're going to look at how this relates to f negative 1, so our inverse function. So just remember, if you have your domain of your function, this is going to equal the range of your inverse function. Not range, as I was trying to write there, range. Okay? And your range of your function this is going to equal your domain of your inverse function. Okay? So you're swapping the x and y values. You can just think of it like that. So this here, hopefully we can see our function here is x plus 4 squared plus 6. Okay? So, if you actually just got to graph this normally, you would notice that this here is a, and I'll just do this under here. If you were graphing this normally, you would look something like this. Okay? It's been moved or translated um, six units up. So six units, oh, very ugly six there. It's been translated six units up and it's moved four units to the left. Okay, so this would be its turning point. Okay, it hasn't been inverted or anything that, that there's no dilation factor. So it would look something like oh, this. Okay. So here, we've got a restricted domain in the question, and we can see this by our 0 to infinity. Oh, sorry. Let's, that was supposed to be a highlighter. 0 to infinity. So you can see this restricts our domain. So I've graphed this on the CAS here, and you can see here this starts at the point 0 our graph. It doesn't go any further down. Okay? So you can work out this point by just looking at the values here. So when x is equal to 0, so we just need to work out when x is equal to 0, what's I, y equal to. Okay, so just remember that's like subbing 0 in. So that becomes 0 plus 4 squared plus 6. Once you work this out, 4 squared, that's 16, plus 6, that's 22. Okay, and that gives you this point here. 0, 22. That's where our graph actually starts at. Okay? So if you're looking at it, it starts at our where our y-axis is. Okay? Over here. Alright? So this is where it starts. So, now, let's work out our domain and range of this function with our restricted domain. Okay? So it starts at the point 22 as we all just worked out. So everything on this side, or the right, on the negative value, okay, this is not in it, okay? That's not in the domain of F, okay? Because it's everything above zero. So everything, every x value above zero is here. So this is in our domain. So that just means our x values. Okay, just remember that's stated by this value at the start. Okay, because it needs to be from 0 to infinity. Okay, so that's all the values above 0 on the x-axis there. So, looking at this graph and this uh, screenshot of the CAS I've got in the middle, we can say it starts at 0 and 22. So that means it's going to continue going across forever. Now... 
get a different colour. So this one keeps on going across forever and ever. Okay? So that means that this will keep on going and going and going all the way to infinity. So our dom this is our domain. Ooh. Our range. It starts at this point here. And it keeps on going up forever and ever. Okay? Because you keep on going higher, just like our parabolas, it will keep on going on forever and ever. There's no stop to it. So just remember this is your range. Alright? So, here we just need to remember our relationship that I said at the start. So, our function, it's domain and range. We'll write that out. So, f... So, f, firstly, our domain. We can see that that starts here. That starts here at zero, okay? Domain is x values, all right? So, don't make sure you don't write the 22 there. So, that there starts at zero, and it will keep on going to the right forever. So, that means it goes to positive infinity, okay? So... And just take note, we've got a closed bracket on the zero. So this is going to be a closed bracket here. Goes from zero to ooh, infinity. Remember, infinity always has your normal bracket there. All right, sorry, that is a very ugly. Let's do that one again. That is slightly just as bad, but anyway. So <laughs> next one, we're going to be looking at is our range of f, okay? So here, we can see in our graph, this starts at 22, okay? Remember, range is just looking at the y values. So this starts here at 22, just there, all right? And then, it keeps on going up forever and ever. So that means it starts at 22, that's where the point zero is as well, so it's a square bracket, and it keeps on going up forever and ever. So, it's just infinity. All right. So now we've got our domain and range of f. We can work out our domain and range of our inverse function. So f to the negative one. Okay. Your domain. Okay. Just remember, this is going to equal to the range of our normal function, okay? So our domain here is just whatever the range was. So this will be 22 to infinity. And then our range is equal to our domain. Of our normal function. So here, this goes from 0 to infinity, okay? So that's how you work out the domain and range of them. You say we don't even need our inverse function to work that out. We can work that out from our normal function, okay? So now we need to find our inverse function, so what it actually is. So to find... inverse, we need to swap x and y and solve for y, okay? Sorry about that. Okay, so with this, just remember, fx, that means y, okay? So we can write out our normal function, okay, as y is equal to x plus 4 squared plus 6, okay? Now we swap our x and y value, so do this, so 
x is equal to y plus 4 squared plus 6. Okay, so here we just need to look at what we're actually at getting y by itself here. So just remember, if you have a constant, okay, something all by itself away from your other variables, you always get rid of that first when you're rearranging equations. So to get rid of plus 6, we need a minus 6 to both sides. So this becomes x minus 6 is equal to y plus 4 squared. I'm just going to go up here for the next one. So now we've got y plus 4 squared. Please do not expand this. All right, to get rid of a square, you need to do the square root of it. And just remember, if you're getting rid of a square and you're doing the square root, it can be the plus or minus of these values. Okay? So, just here, to get rid of this, we need a square root. X minus 6. Okay? We don't need to put our plus and minus just for this one because we're actually describing the whole function. Okay? So, we've got y plus 4. Alright, and now we've got y plus 4 here all by itself, so all we need to do here is take away 4. So just make sure that you're not putting this under your square root sign, this is separate, okay? So I'm just going to put y back on this side, and we're going to minus 4 from both sides, so it's equal to x minus 6, and that's under the square root side, and then minus 4, okay? So this is what our inverse function is. So f negative 1x is equal to the square root of x minus 6 minus 4. Okay? So this is how you go about doing these. And just make sure that you're understanding your range and domain and that relationship there between its function and its inverse function and also looking at swapping x and y there to work out the inverse function. So good luck and hopefully it goes well.